You ready for this? I'm ready. I see that you're sporting your Slytherin mug, where I am sporting my Gryffindor mug. Yeah. Hey, brother, and welcome everyone to another edition of J vs. Ben. We got the head whips whipping like crazy over here, and we should be because we're looking out like owls for our Hogwarts letter, which is what today's quiz is all about. You set that up so well. You yeah. set it up so well. Whipping <laughs> like an owl, looking for a Hogwarts letter. I'm excited now. Yeah. Although you I'm, be. I'm massively intimidated. This seems like, as ever, the moments in the stories where they just pack in tons of details that just never come up again. As I understand it, this quiz is specifically about Harry getting his first Hogwarts letter. I could be wrong. It could be about every Hogwarts letter. But if it's just about the first one, it makes me very nervous because that's a very limited amount of space for the questions to come from. I was going to say, there's not more than like, there, there could not be more than one typed page of words. Yeah. Entirely I mean, on that letter. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could go to like the, the events surrounding it. Okay. Or something. Okay. We're gonna find out. Maybe it's from all seven years, which really only be six with Harry skips the seventh year, but whatever. Wow. Yeah, there you go. All right, guys, let's dive on in. Oh, they'll be writing to you. In case you guys are new to the J versus Ben format, this is how it is going to work. Our video editor, Riley, is on the other end of the camera, and he's going to be reading us today's 10 standard quiz questions, plus an additional five quiz master questions from our quiz masters over on Patreon. Ben and I will have to answer all the questions completely from memory, but if we have no idea what the answer is, Riley can offer us the multiple choice. If you'd like to play along with us, there is a link to the quiz in the description down below. Are you ready? Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye. Ben? Ben. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm declaring it right now. This is a no bits show. A no bits show? No more no, bits. I doubt it. But I love the bits. Bit. How dare you. Huh. Question one. What was the number of the house on Privet Drive where Harry lived with the Dursleys and where his first Hogwarts letter was sent? Well, this feels like a softball. Dare I say? You got it? Are you sure? You wanna know what's really hard? Yeah. Is writing If you BRB hard. on the first question, dude. I won't do it. I won't do it. I just wanted to make sure to use up as much screen as humanly possible. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Four. Wow, wow. How, look how minimal screen you used. <laughs> You're right. That's it's kidding, a, it's like, <laughs> oh, it, it went dead. That wasn't good. Not Number dead. four is correct. Okay. okay. Excellent, excellent. Number four, Privet Drive. That feels like something that you could ask at like a standard trivia event that has nothing to do with Harry Potter because then it's kind of like, oh man, do you know anything about Harry Potter? Right, yeah, yeah. If you know anything, you know it was number four, Privet Drive. To anybody else that's like, oh, is that even an important detail? Yeah. Of course it is, Pete. Question number two. What song did Uncle Vernon sing whilst boarding up the letterbox to stop Harry's Hogwarts letters reaching him? Wow, they really just went straight from zero to 100 on this one. What, what song did he hum while boarding it up? Wow. Um. Uh, no post, no post, no, no post on Sunday. Sunday. Um, I would go multiple choice. I would go multiple choice as well. This is bananas. I am instituting a new rule. Oh no. I will first sing you the melody of the song. Do you, you, oh wow. Okay. And I will put that on the internet. You okay. will. For you. Oh my for gosh. You. Wow, if you I'm guys, excited. If you guys don't know Riley, this is big. <laughs> this is a big moment. This is a big okay. moment, okay. Okay, I, I wanna see if you can get it, I'm just curious. Okay. It's uh, it's uh, do, 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 do. Do. Uh, no, that didn't help me at all. I'm definitely cutting that out. Don't, I wouldn't cut it, it was out. Pitchy. I think, I think it, no, it was good. It was good. It rang true. I feel like the lights seem brighter. I feel more energetic. The ants go marching in because there is no post on Sunday. <laughs> there you go. Nailed it. <laughs> it so like I gather my, my clue was not helpful at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it did make me feel better about everything. Hey. Tiptoe through the tulips. B, prancing through the pansies. C, roaming through the roses. Or D, dance through the daisies. Okay. Yeah, none of these sound, none of these ring a bell at all either. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've heard these words, even though I've read and book. listened to the books. Apparently, we have no tiny, so tiny many Tim times. fans on the audio. In the 
Well, quiz today. Okay. All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. A. I also said A. A is correct. Yes. yes! Boom. My favorite song. I know it. Well. <laughs> I know. I can't believe we went multiple choice for that I one. I know. What a, what a just a laugh. You know, just doing it for the audience. You know, a gas. <laughs> I think the problem was I didn't sing it as high pitched as as uh, as you Vernon probably did. Be accustomed to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dursley's yeah. Uh, the, the Vernons really got that. Yeah, like a uh, what? What is what is the term for falsetto? Someone? A f yeah, falsetto. falsetto. Yeah. Yes. yeah, classically feel, trained. Cla <laughs> Could you imagine if that was just like randomly like a detail that just went completely unexplained? It's just like <laughs> he had a great falsetto. And you will not mess it up. Hard stop. Hard stop. End of sentence. And Hates he magic, but like, was, <laughs> yeah, he was pretty into choir. Right. Now it's time for the first Quizmaster question of the mm. game. This question was submitted by Ember Nowak and voted on by patrons. The question is, what was the name of the hotel the Dursleys and Harry stayed in when oh. they left Privet Drive to escape the letters? Bonus this. point if you get the room number. Jay's going to know both of these. That is true. Is he really? Yeah. yeah. But only because we used this question when we went to RTX as one of the trivia questions. Oh. So I recently wrote this question <laughs> myself. And I got about 100 of these at the front desk. Only got them out. Ready? Three, yeah. two, one. The rail view in number 17. Uh, I said the blue seagull in number 37. Oh, pretty close. Yeah. Blue seagull. Blue seagull. Yeah. Seagulls aren't blue yeah. ever. It is the blue seagull in. No, it's not. Oh. I tried to keep that. I, I, this is a no bets show. Uh, Jay is 100% correct. <laughs> Very impressive. Very impressive. I blue did Seagull it. Seagull Inn does sound more fun, to be honest. It reminds me of the blue cat on Ozark. There's a blue cat. Mm. That's the name of the uh, restaurant they first uh, buy to start laundering, laundering money through. Mm. Interesting. Yes. Quick, if you were going to start a business to launder money, what would it be? Uh, funeral home. Also another business they buy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that was so fast. I put a lot of thought into this. I'm personally the bowling alley fan myself. Bowling alley. Ooh. You know what they're going to do in uh, Breaking Bad was actually arcade. So that's a pretty good one. Oh, all right. That's a good one. Just like how many I got a lemonade stand. Spend. Lemonade stand? Lemonade stand? No, it feels pretty about. easy to track how much money a lemonade stand can generate. Nah. Nah? Nah. 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 That one picture of those of kids are reporting that to the IRS. <laughs> Question number four. Where was Harry staying when his Hogwarts letter was finally hand-delivered to him by Hagrid? I, I guess it's the name of the place. It's also just... Words. Like a description of where they're staying. Right, <laughs> yeah. What is it? What is like the way that it's described as? Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. The hut on the rock. The floor. I said The that. sea. Does it say the floor of the sea? Yeah. Does it really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. I said, I said, the house on the rock at sea. I'd say those are both correct. Yeah. The answer that they give is hut on the rock. So okay. you both okay. got the right phrasing. All right. The hut on the rock. Job well done. The floor. The floor. <laughs> Where is he laying right now? <laughs> Like the very like dry humor that was like slowly yeah, creeping like, its right. way in. Yeah. Okay, question number five. In order to accept his Hogwarts place, Harry's letter asked him to send his return owl by which date? Okay. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. September first. I said July thirty first, which is also technically Ben today. is correct. Oh my gosh! Really? That's why I yes. was like, wait. That would be that day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a man. I was like, I, I actually I wrote down October 31st. So and then I was like, that doesn't make sense. Because Did you reply after? Let me get to us by Halloween. What? Nothing <laughs> happens in the first couple months. The, the first couple months, they're just syllabus they months. Just, yeah, don't worry about it, man. This is the second Quizmaster question of the game. This question was submitted by Maddie DeVuve and Morgan and Jack and voted on by patrons. This is a select all that apply question. And it is uh, a long one. Oh boy. Oh man. What titles or accolades are listed under Dumbledore's name on the letter? Oh boy. Let me know when you're ready. There oh, are A through H. Do you think you could just list them from memory? Oh. Mm -hmm. 
I will tell you there are five. Oh, I got four. Okay. Slap my head. Okay. Okay. Yes, I think I can do it from memory. Oh, I'm like, there's like one I know that they like, I don't think they even bring it up again. I think I know exactly what you're think, getting yeah. stuck to. Is it? Okay. Right, well, okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. All right. So it's Order of Merlin, First, first class. class. Yep. Uh, Supreme Mugwum. Yep. Chief Warlock of the Wisdom Gamot. Yep. I got Headmaster of Hogwarts. Yep. And then, and then it's like then, Sorcerer or something. I Grand, put, you put Grand I, Sorcerer. I put Grand Sorcerer. Sorcerer or something. I had Sorcerer. Something. Not Sorcerer Supreme. Not so, yeah, I was like, I was like, it's not Sorcerer Supreme. I yeah. was like, Supreme Sorcerer. I, well, then, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually like, I thought the same thing, and I was like, what's well, already Supreme Mugwump? Yeah. Then I was like, oh, it's it's uh, Sorcerer. I was yeah, Chief War. No, not Warlock. Like, how many different words for magical being can I, I put on here? Uh, right. I know. Yeah. Were we close? It is Grand Sorcerer. Oh man. It is. So it. there is one thing that is incorrect. Oh no! That I am wondering if we should fact check real quick, but um, the one that you were both missing was International Confederation of Wizards. I think and that's the Supreme Mugwump, right? Supreme of- Mugwump is on here separately. Just I so, th- just that he's a member. Of, so, is the what? Which one did we list that wasn't on there? Headmaster of Hogwarts, which seems that's interesting. Odd. Okay, so Headmaster's not on there, but oh. International International Confederation of Wizards. Well, that's surprising. I thought that that was the, I thought that was like the, like his title meant that he was like the leader of the International Confederation of Wizards. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. Like, you know, you're right. Like not, you'd be you're not president Supreme in the United States. of the International right. Confederation. Right, obviously that's incorrect. Yeah, is. I'm gonna say that that is incorrect. The question is incorrect. I feel like I'm gonna give you both credit. I accept. Question number seven. Which of these books was not on the first year reading list? Oh, oh, oh. oh boy. A, A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emmerich Switch. B, The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Tremble. C, Hogwarts, A History by Bethilda Bagshot. Or D, a book called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? Never Push heard of mark. it. By okay. some guy named Newt. Got Scamander. it. Scamander. Easy. Scamander. I see what they're going for here. I do too. Yeah. Think you can fi- think you can trick us? You think you can trick us? Hopefully. Question. I'm not getting it Hopefully. wrong. <laughs> yeah. All right. Three, two, one. C. C. Yeah. C is correct. Yay! Yeah. It is history of magic, not Hogwarts history. A bit of light reading. Question number eight. How many sets of plain work robes did first years need? That's the worst drawing of that number that's ever been committed to humankind. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. One, two, three. I gave it away. Three is yeah. correct. Three. Three. Good job. I, I give unofficial credit to the largest writing of a very small answer. Oh. Just mentally, you know? Okay. So we're okay. both doing great so on you that just, front. So you kind of like log that away. Yeah, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of storing that in the database of- Right. Of it's credit. Like, come come Christmas time, it's like, hmm, who do I like more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben did write bigger. <laughs> My three took up the whole thing, man. Hang on though. What are you writing? He hasn't asked the question yet. I was writing really big. Oh. You know what? You know what? Oh, uh, well, I feel like I can do it better. Maybe I get some rally points at least. Right? Right? Riley? Huh? Way better. Uh, there's still some white around that, Jay. Come on. But look more less than his! Uh yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. Okay. I'll give you that. Hello and welcome everyone to the scenic route where as always, we just enjoy some merry time running around away from the trivia table. And I know that we call it the scenic route and everything, but there is a bakery nearby that is absolutely baking some delicious breads and they smell amazing right now. And I just want you guys to know that it's here. Just imagine you're here and there's the sweet smells of baking bread. But as ever, I have to tell you that all of this moving around that I do here on the scenic route wouldn't be nearly as comfortable without today's sponsor, which happens to be MeUndies. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not sure if it's the smell of freshly baked bread that's doing it or just the actual factual nature of this particular pair of underbridges, but they are what I can only describe as buttery soft. I'll, I'll leave some to the imagination, but just check it out. Yes. 
And I will be completely honest with you guys. I was a huge fan of MeUndies before they were even a sponsor of the channel. And from the moment I tried them for the first time, I had to completely overhaul my sock and underwear drool. And that's just the thing too, is that like, because it's called MeUndies, everybody knows about the underwear. But did you know they make lots of other amazing things too? We're talking durable, cushy socks that will make your feet sing. Super stretchy loungewear, daily tees, shorts, and rompers that add a little silky softness to your everyday. They even make hoodies for your dog so you can match every important person in your life. They come in available sizes of XS to 4XL and tons of colors and prints make MeUndies your destination for all things soft and sustainable. And MeUndies has a great offer for our viewers. So if you are a first time purchaser, you will get 20% off your order and free shipping and returns. To get 20% off your first order with a 100% satisfaction guarantee, head on over to MeUndies.com slash J versus B. Again, it's going to be MeUndies.com slash J versus B for 20% off your first order. Link is in the description down below. All right, well, I know Ben is out hiding my honey again, but I have to say, he looks very comfortable doing it. Anyway, I suppose I need something to do in the meantime, and would you look at that, it, it is cake o'clock, people. Yes, that's right. Today's video is brought to you by DoorDash. Let me ask you something. Are you guys still paying for delivery fees on DoorDash? Because if so, then I have to say, come on, people, what are you doing? It's the summer of Dash Pass, where dreams come true. For example, I'm personally dreaming of a cake without any delivery fees. I'm just push a few buttons here and boom cake is here dreams do come true where's my flork found it Ooh, it looks good mm. Better. But seriously, when you sign up for Dash Pass, you too can enjoy members only offers and zero delivery fees year round. On average, that works out to about four to five dollars of savings per order on DoorDash. So if you order two things a month, then it immediately pays for itself. Or if you're like me and you're ordering like, I don't know, one to two cakes per week, then you're really getting ahead on things. I mean, not on your diet or anything, but you know. What's life without cake, right? But combine that with those members only offers dropping every single week and you've got everything you need right at your fingertips to have the best summer ever. So shine bright during DoorDash's summer of Dash Pass and get 50% off your first order on DoorDash up to a $15 value. Just use promo code JVersB2022 at checkout when you make an order of $12 or more. One more time, that's 50% off your first order up to a $15 value when you sign up for DoorDash's Dash Pass using promo code JVersB2022. 2022. Dash Pass benefits only on eligible orders that meet the minimum subtotal. Terms apply. One more time, that's JVersB2022 at checkout. Get 50% off your first order of up to a $15 value. Link is in the description down below. What a miss. What I, a just miss. Want, I just want you to know that Riley liked my BRB way better than yours. There's no way that's true. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. pretty critical we have it on. We have it on video. <laughs> I was pretty critical. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> they were both Standard equally answer. not good. <laughs> Okay, I'm introducing a new segment. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Dear. This is the Brownie Point Point Break. I'm a little bit of a box office nerd, so okay. this is a box office related question. Box office question. Okay. okay. What is the first animated non-Disney film to make over $100 million at the box office? Oh, oh, did you never tell us the answer? I never no. told you the answer. No. I remember we the were all like animated. making a variety of stabs at this. I know, and it was like we were missing. Okay, for, <laughs> read it again. What is the first animated non-Disney non film, Disney film to make over $100 million at the box office? $100 million. Domestic, 100 million, which, of which sounds like it sounds like a lot, but anymore that seems like, right. like almost cost of admission, you know? So that make over a hundred million. I feel like all I could remember is that we made a lot of obvious guesses that were not right. I know, that's the problem is that like, I feel like right. it'd be more entertaining to like see us like first, first attempt at it because yeah. there's, I, like, I think, I think like the things that came to mind were like uh, Prince of Egypt. Um, yes. Yeah, like Road to El Dorado. Road del or yeah. like Land Before Time, Five Goes West. Uh, the first Pokemon movie I think was, oh. was in there. Uh, very good guesses. Yeah. Prince of Egypt is very close. <clears throat> oh, Prince is it? It's the same it? year. Same year? As the movie same that... year as Prince of Egypt? Yes. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a hint. It okay. was it's based on a Nickelodeon kids TV show. Very popular uh, one in the nineties. Okay. Okay. The movie okay. came out in 1998. Okay. okay, I got it. That's unbelievable. This is for a brownie point, by I the think way. we saw it in theaters. I'm sure we did. I'm gonna be so happy if you guys get it. Ooh, okay. I have faith. Oh, 
the Rugrats movie. Yes! yes! Rugrats! Great Boom. job. This is the third Quizmaster question of the game. This question was submitted by Jack Grennan and voted on by patrons. Besides Ollivanders, where in Diagon Alley could a Hogwarts student go to purchase their wand? Besides Ollivanders? Besides Ollivanders. Now, hold on. Just I don't even lickety's. know that that's a thing. This sounds very deep cut, first it, of all. It does. This isn't in the books. Mm. Um, we have a, a video game situation on our hands This here? feels like video game tomfoolery. Tom Riddlery. Ooh. <laughs> Interestingly enough, this is sourced from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the movie. The so movie? I don't think it's in the book. So I don't good. know how we want to count this, but... Okay, okay. That means that they walk past yeah. another wand maker's... Yeah. A. Jimmy Kittle's Wonderful Wands. B. Wizarding Accessories Emporium. C. Miss Jenny's Magical Wands. D, James Gudgeon's wand shop. James Gudgeon, we can only assume, is the largely frustrated husband of Gladys Gudgeon, Gilder Lockhart's biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is so true. Uh, okay, I have an answer. You'll never be right. able to compete. Yeah, yeah, you can't compete. <laughs> never be as good as Ogildy. Yeah. Okay. Ta -ta. Three, two, one. I said C. I said B. That is incorrect, both of you. It is oh. A. Jimmy Kittle's Wonderful Wands. Jimmy Kimmel? How could you forget? Yeah, G the, the Jimmy late Kimmel. night guy. <laughs> <laughs> he moonlights. On the side. No, he can't moonlight. He's already moonlighting. What if he did just like. <laughs> he's like a huge fan of the books or something, and he's like, I will put. $5 million in this movie if you name a wand shop after me. Just put it in the background. Literally just make my kids happy. No, it was actually James Corden's wonderful ones. <laughs> Question number 10. What was the specification for the type of cauldron first years were asked to bring? Uh, uh, right? I think. Three, two, one. Pewter? Pewter? Hmm. Okay. So, yes, but also the uh, full answer is pewter standard size two. Oh. Oh. Pewter standard size two. Huh. So I'm not quite sure. I would say it's a half that's, point. That's, I would yeah, say that's, that's a half point. That's down to you, Riles. I'd say, I'd say you're both awarded one half point. One half point. I'll take that half But point. not a brownie point because... You already have one of those. Pewter seems like an odd choice to me. Pewter like. does. Because, like, like, it's pretty flexible, isn't it? It is seems it? like it would have a lower melting point than would be necessary <clears throat> for, like, having flames underneath it all the time. What I remember is that we had a Star Wars Monopoly set growing okay. up. And that Pewter on figures. the box, it put in, like, big advertising letters, pewter figurines inside. And I always remember that the Darth Vader figure's wand would always get, like, wonky. And you could just, like, bend it right back. <laughs> It's wand. Like, yeah, his wand. Exactly. Yeah, I'm in the wrong fandom. His light, Darth Vader's wand. You get his lightsaber would always get like bent, and you could just like move it back. And I was like, man, pewter's so easy to move. So I don't know. Maybe Monopoly was lying to me, or it's it was only partially pewter. But that's what I've always thought of whenever I read this about the cauldrons. I'm like, I feel like the pewter would just get right in the potion. Question eleven. What was the name of the bookshop? where Harry bought his Hogwarts set texts. James yeah. Gudgeon's Barnes and Noble. Yeah, James <laughs> Judge, yeah. James Gudgeon's Barnes and Noble. Books a million. That'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> it's like, Barnes and Noble, yeah, we hired some wizard people. We just opened up in Diagon Alley. It's good, get your books there. We got a lot of muggle books too. I guess you could sell really just any, why, you think wizards would just, what, do you think they sell like just muggle novels at wizard I bet, I bet they have like a shelf. Yeah, they get like, because it's not like stor the stories aren't interesting to just anyone. It's true. You know? It's true. Right? I mean, heck, we're over here in the muggle world reading about wizarding stuff. I so, know. I mean. Yeah. yeah. What would it wizards is. consider fantasy? Ooh. Or even do they? No, this is like the Crumblehorn Snorkak. Like, <laughs> okay. We got to draw the line somewhere, people. <laughs> yeah, enough is enough. Enough is enough. <laughs> There's no such thing. Here's my unicorn. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
All right, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Flourish and blots. Flourish and blots. That's correct. There it is. Flourish! Now it's time for the fourth Patreon Quizmaster question of the game. This question was submitted by Carly Cornett and voted on by patrons. This is another select all that apply. What other mail was delivered with Harry's Hogwarts letter? A, a letter from Smelting's Academy. B, a postcard from Aunt Marge. C, a magazine called Fine Gardening. D, a brown envelope that looked like a bill. And E, a newsletter from Grunnings labeled Director's Edition. Okay, you ready? I think so. Three, two, one. I said the postcard from Marge and the Fine Gardening magazine. I said A, B, and D. So Smeltings, Postcard, and Bill. I'm afraid those are both incorrect. Oh, I know there's the postcard from Marge. It was the postcard from Marge and a brown envelope that looked like a bill. Ah, oh, man. Man. Marge is ill. Ate a funny thing. <laughs> both close. <laughs> How could it be a funny thing? That's what it says. What a, I love, like, think about what has to happen for, uh, for Dursley or Vernon to be reading that postcard, right? First of all, Marge has to find the funny thing. She has to decide, what the heck? Consume it anyway. And then she has to get sick and then be like, you know who needs to know about this? Vernon. <laughs> That doesn't write a letter. It's like postcard. Postcard. Post postcard. The postman can know that I ate a funny thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's no big deal. It's like, dear Vernon, I'm ill. Ate a funny fig. Marge. Here you go. Is oh, really Marge I want is ill. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that was a good laugh. Question thirteen. Madam Malkin's shop sold which item from Harry's list of required equipment? Uh, I guess this, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, it has to be. Three, two, one. What work robes times, times three. three. <laughs> robes is correct. <laughs> yeah. Times three. Times, times three. three. That's I, not on here. I but. also put times three. Yeah. <laughs> Question number fourteen. Who wrote the first year set text magical theory? Magical theory was written by. Got it. It's up there somewhere. Yeah. It's rattling around. You're probably close. What are you feeling? What are you thinking about? I have to honestly tell you that the name that keeps getting thrown up to my brain is Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's Dr. go ahead. Dr. Ike Razor Beam. <laughs> Is, is, is Gwyneth Paltrow close at all? Uh, no. No, okay. No. okay. Occasionally, I, I'm trying to think if there's like some weird dot you'd be connecting between Gwyneth and this person. And I, if there is, I don't know about it. Um, yeah, there's also Dr. Ike Razorbeam. <laughs> always always, always possible. a good option. Yeah. I have a very vague hmm. hint that I could drop that could also be very revealing. Oh boy. Were they in Iron Man? Okay, my vague hint is, kind of sounds like a breakfast food. Now you're gonna it, get it. This is way. Kind of sounds. Maybe that was too too not vague. Kind of sounds like it's only it's only helpful if you know what it is. Yeah, right. She does seem like someone who would try and brand her own like style of cooking eggs. Mm-hmm. You can just buy that recipe card on Goop. And they're actually just poached. <laughs> it's just poached. <laughs> it's just yeah. like more expensive it's poached, somehow. But it's poached, but in like red wine or something. <laughs> oh. yeah. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah, Mold that eggs. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> does it sound goopy? It does sound horrifying. Yeah. All right, three, two, one. Adelbert Waffling. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you put? So Dr. 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 Albert the third, <laughs> Jr. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> hey, uh, not the fourth. The third again. Yeah, on the list is middle name. <clears throat> Jay is correct, but I want to give Ben a uh, a breakfast point. A breakfast point. <laughs> breakfast point. Breakfast cookies. Now it's time for the final Quizmaster question of the game. This question was submitted by Emerald Phoenix and Caden Medwid and voted on by patrons. Hogwarts letters are typically delivered via owl post. How do Muggleborn students receive their letters? 
I mean, I mean, for all intents and purposes, is it <laughs> Harry? Like, Harry, yeah, like it, he's being the exact same situation, right? Like Hermione could have just been his neighbor, yeah, for sure. So, owls again, standard post. I know that seems like there's only two options, and it's either just an owl anyway. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I don't see why Harry would get it if. Yeah, why would he get now? Why would he get now? Well, if maybe, I mean, maybe it's an email. <laughs> they get an email. They just text them. Yeah. Hey, want to come to Hogwarts? You up? <laughs> it's like emojis. Yeah. Emoji of an owl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it is so easy texting the muggles. So you know um, how on like iPhones when you type like congrats and it sends like the balloon oh, yeah, animation? Yeah. yeah. It's just like a bunch of owls. It's just a bunch of owls. I mean, I, yeah. Okay, I'm just going with this. I'm trying to make it sound interesting, but yeah. Three, two, one. Standard mail. I put mail carrier. So the answer is hand delivered by a facility member. A facility member? A facility member. Oh, what do you mean? I a guess they just mean a faculty like the, member. The facility of I guess, Hogwarts or I guess, the facility of the post office? I believe that they mean Hogwarts? So Hagrid coming to deliver Harry his letter was really just like, they were like, he'll be fine. He's basically a wizard. Yeah. You're a wizard, Harry. The important thing is that I won. Okay, Adelberg waffling. Adelberg waffling. Adelbert waffling. Adelbert. Adelbert waffling. Seems like a weird. All the names seem to go really well with like the the subject of the book, but I don't know what he'd be. I guess he's like waffling on what he believes. Could be. Yeah, he's like theory, magical theory. Maybe it's maybe it's. I don't know. We all <laughs> waffle on theories every now and again. Not us here at Super Carlin Brothers. Our theories are concrete. Basically fact. Basically fact. Except for when we're wrong, in which case we just disregard those. Yeah. And now we need to give a huge thank you to these patrons who support us over on Patreon. And a big shout out to these quiz masters who submitted questions for today's quiz. Thank you, Amber. Maddie. Morgan. Jack. Emerald Phoenix. Hayden. And Carly. If you would like to submit your own question to potentially be heard in one of these Jay versus Ben episodes, then head on over to patreon.com slash supercarlinbrothers and select the quiz masters tier. Thanks again to all of our patrons over on Patreon. Guys, as ever, thank you so much for playing along with us. Be sure to let us know how you did in the towel section down below. Also, check out in the description, we have a link to a very quick, like two question survey. Later this year, Ben and I are doing a live show of our podcast, Popcorn Culture, at Roanoke's Go Fest, and yeah. we are inviting all of you to come see it in person. It's an awesome three-day event that celebrates everything outdoors, and uh, we are trying to find out whether or not we need to tell the people that we, we need to set up like a separate event for a meet and greet. So if you're gonna be there, we'd love to know, and we'd for, love for you to be there. So just check that out. It is in the description down below. Thanks. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to see some of our podcast, Popcorn Culture, you can click right here. You can just subscribe to that channel. We upload new episodes every Friday. Also, you can just listen along audio-wise wherever pods are cast. Otherwise, until next time, bye! bye.